The Lake Manchester Dam flood security upgrade was a Brisbane City Council project undertaken to ensure that the dam meets current and cold guidelines for large gravity dams. The stabilisation works were to be completed by December 2007. Located approximately 25 kilometres west of Brisbane, Lake Manchester Dam contains approximately 26,000 megalitres, with a catchment area of 74 square kilometres. Built between 1912 and 1916, it was last used as a source of potable water in 1998, but was then reactivated in October 2005 as a key component of Brisbane City Council's drought strategy. The original dam structure was 160 metres long and 38 metres high. It had a 45 metre long unlined free overflow spillway. The project had to address the following deficiencies inadequate spillway capacity, the potential instability of the dam when water levels approach the crest of the dam, the possibility of washing out the downstream toe of the dam during major flood events, and potential erosion problems in the plunge pool of the spillway. Following contract award, McConnell Dowell, as part of the Brisbane Water McConnell Dowell Alliance, conducted an options study which identified 11 possible designs for the upgrade. These 11 options were then reviewed by a team of national and international dam experts in conjunction with the client, Brisbane City Council, to select and model the best option to strengthen the dam. The chosen method involved strengthening the existing concrete dam through the installation of 69 post-tension ground anchors. This involved drilling holes through the 38 metre high dam wall into the foundation rock, 50 to 60 metres below the base of the wall. The anchors, 65 and 55 strand, were then installed into the holes and grouted into the rock strata. They would be spaced approximately 3 metres apart and positioned in two planes, a vertical plane of 47 anchors on the crest of the dam wall and in a world's first an inclined plane of 22 anchors installed at the toe of the dam at 60 degrees to increase the sliding friction resistance to the forces on the dam wall. The average anchor length on the crest was 78 metres, with the longest anchor in excess of 100 metres. The scope of works also included raising the dam wall by 5.8 metres, the replacement of the 90-year-old intake outlet tower and pipework, realignment of the spillway entrance conditions and stabilisation of the spillway abutment batter slopes and downstream plunge pool, and the construction of a new 55 metre wide concrete line spillway. With the final design only completed in February 2007 and major works scheduled for completion in December 2007, the project had an extremely tight deadline. Raising the dam wall by 5.8 metres involved the innovative solution of placing flat-bottomed U-shaped precast concrete shells on top of the dam wall and back-filling the shells with reinforced concrete to provide the load distribution beam for the post-tensioned anchors. This innovation greatly accelerated the crest raising and post-tensioning works. Meanwhile, the anchors were being fabricated on site with 300 kilometres of 15.2 millimetre steel strand being utilised in the manufacturing of the 69 anchors. The anchors ranged in size from 42 strand lengths of around 45 metres to 65 strand lengths averaging 78 metres, the longest reaching a maximum length of 100.8 metres. A length of 20 millimetre polyethylene sheathing was pre-injected with anti-corrosive grease for five seconds. It was then attached to the greasing machine, where a 15.2 mm individual steel strand was pushed through the sheath, the voids in the strand and within the sheathing being filled with anti-corrosive grease. Once the steel strand had reached the end of the sheath, the sheath was cut and the additional strand allowed to run out. The strand was then cut and the exposed ends cleaned thoroughly with high pressure hot water to allow the grout in the anchor bond zone to bond effectively. The completed strands were then fed through plastic spaces and an epoxy filled nose cone was fitted to the ends and then the complete anchor was moved onto the storage bed.
Meanwhile, the anchor holes were being prepared on the dam wall. Each 345 mm diameter hole had to be tested for water tightness and, if necessary, the hole grouted with the Portland cement and re-drilled. Each hole was deemed complete only when it had been fully checked for correct depth and diameter and then surveyed using a camera for visual inspection prior to being flushed clean and water tested. A two millimetre thick corrugated polyethylene sheath with external spaces was then lowered into the borehole. This would act as an impermeable, flexible barrier against corrosion for the bond length of the anchor. Grout tubes were also attached as the sheath was fed into the hole. The corrugated sheathing was followed by plain polyethylene sheathing with additional lengths progressively fusion welded to the main sheath until the full length of the hole had been reached. This polyethylene sheathing would line the free length of the hole, providing an impermeable barrier. Following testing for water tightness, the anchor installation frame and winches were installed and the anchor was loaded onto a purpose-built trolley train and transported to the dam wall. The end of the anchor was attached to the pulling winch and winched over the installation frame. The end of the anchor was carefully guided into the sheath and along with the grout tubes gradually lowered into the hole. Once sufficient length of anchor was installed, Gravity took over and the anchor was allowed to feed into the sheath under its own weight using the braking winch to control the rate of descent. On reaching the final position, the anchor was supported at the top by the A-frame and chains. The outer sheathing was then checked for water tightness by topping up with water and extracting water from the outer annulus to provide a differential pressure of at least two metres for at least one hour. The hole was then drained and grouted. The Oil Well G high density Portland cement was simultaneously injected into the inside and outside of the sheath at a controlled rate to minimise differential pressures on the polyethylene sheathing. The grout was then left for 21 to 28 days prior to stressing. The permanent threaded anchor head was installed onto the bearing plate and the wedges were fitted to each strand in the anchor. A 1700 ton hydraulic jack was used to load the anchors in gradual steps up to the test load of 1625 tons. The load was then reduced to 70% of the braking load and locked off. Following successful stressing and monitoring, the anchors were capped and sealed using several anti-corrosive and sealed barriers to ensure a high quality product for 100 plus years. While the anchors were being installed, the old outlet tower had been removed to allow the dam wall to be raised and a new tower had been constructed. The 90-year-old outlet valves and pipework were replaced with modern equipment to allow the dam to provide water for many years to come. Following the hydraulic modelling of the spillway to evaluate the flow characteristics and assess rock protection requirements, the old spillway was removed and more than 80,000 cubic metres of earthworks were excavated to construct the new concrete line spillway. More than 80% of these earthworks involved rock. Given the constraints of site geology, very tight program and the large volume of earthworks required, controlled blasting was considered to be the best option available to progress the excavation. 
However, blasting closer than 50 meters to an active storage concrete gravity dam had not been undertaken before. Consequently, a detailed blasting and blast monitoring program was developed to ensure that the blasts could be carried out safely. Blast generated vibrations transmitted to the existing dam structure were kept within the prescribed tolerances of PBVs less than 25 millimeters per second. The new 55 meter long broad crested spillway was constructed of 3,000 cubic meters of concrete. It has a downstream slope of up to 45 degrees with a horizontal downstream flip. It was designed to pass the Probable Maximum Precipitation Design Flood or PMPDF. The existing spillway had a capacity approximately equal to the 1 to 200 AEP before the crest was overtopped. In the end, the project was able to meet its deadline of stabilization of the gravity dam by the end of 2007, with final works in the spillway and outlets completed in June of 2008. A highly successful project for both Brisbane Water and McConnell Dow. McConnell Dow, I think, have been very successful in an environment like this, keeping a team together, keeping a team focused, getting um, using the consultants properly, negotiating and debating what sort of outcomes, looking for opportunities, managing risks across all of those parameters by which you judge a project. I think McConnell Dow have been very, very successful. The Lake Manchester Dam Flood Security Upgrade Project, ensuring a safe, secure and state-of-the-art water storage facility for the people of Queensland, and further establishing McConnell Dowell as a leader in creative dam construction.